It's the middle of September, and it's probably a good time to check on our sweet potatoes. They've been growing, I guess, since beginning of May or so. And let's see what we might have in store. This is my sweet potato bed. It was planted in this three by seven galvanized planter bed. If you recall, only half the bed was planted with uh, sweet potato uh, slips. The other half had my kidney beans in it. Uh, once I harvested the kidney beans, the sweet potato uh, vines kind of overtook that area. And as you can see, they're starting to reach up into uh, what was supposed to be an apricot tree, but it's more like a actually a wild cherry. So I think the company might have uh, sent me the wrong one. This is actually gonna be get cut down. There's actually two of them here. They're gonna get cut down and another garden bed is gonna be uh, put there next year. But right now we've got the sweet potatoes and let's see how they're doing. There was a whole bunch that were planted here, but a number really didn't do well, right? Particularly right back here, the kidney bean plants had grown pretty tall and ended up overshadowing these plants. So I'm not quite sure how well they've done. I'm gonna say, most of this is runners here rather than the actual plants themselves but let, let's uh, give a look well <laughs> this is a rather inauspicious start <laughs> not very hopeful and i'm going to say even if i'd let them go another month two months i don't know and I'm getting any sweet potatoes out of that. Here, let me dig into the ground. Now, there's absolutely nothing in here. This has always been my problem with sweet potatoes. Every single time, twice, I've ever planted uh, sweet potatoes, this happens. The potatoes just don't form. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Okay, let's see this one. Yep, same thing. All right, now well, these vines, let's see. Well, it looks like they one of them rooted down somewhere. But we're not getting any sweet potatoes here. All right, let's see what else we got. Oh, here, there's my sweet potato. Massive harvest here. All right, this is incredibly disappointing. I was really looking forward to having sweet potatoes this year. None. Now I'll say, I didn't fertilize this at all, so don't think that it got all this greenery because I gave it a ton of nitrogen, which caused it to produce leaves and no uh, potatoes. This got no fertilizer at all other than what was put into the bed initially which was just some organic balanced fertilizer when I made the uh, soil up to fill the bed. I mean how is that? How is it every time I grow a sweet potato this is what happens to me? What am I doing wrong? and I'm feeling nothing down in here. So it's not like I'm just pulling the top roots out. Okay, this entire bed is nothing, nothing. Now I do see some interesting things here. Oh no, no, no this is just attached to the uh, vine. I thought it was a thing that was growing here. All right, I'm pulling out all these vines. Well, chickens are like the sweet potato leaves. All right, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I actually dug up the bed just to see. And this is the extent of my sweet potato harvest. It's going to be some good eating. 
So in digging up the bed though, I think I may have discovered the issue. This of course stands a couple of feet high. So it's basically a hugel culture type of uh, bed. There's a whole bunch of uh, sticks and whatnot on the very bottom. They're sitting right on the ground. And over that, I've layered various different amendments to the soil, uh, to the box. There was uh, old uh, leaf mold I put on there. And there was horse bedding too. You can actually see that right here. There was a couple of layers of horse bedding here. And I'm wondering if that's the issue. Because there was obviously manure and stuff like that included. It was aged, um, but not composted. And then on top of that, I added a mix of uh, peat moss, garden soil, and that was my uh, general uh, mix for the uh, ground here, the soil part of it, and what I planted the slips into. I'm just wondering if the roots ended up going down into that horse bedding and that's what was too rich for them to actually produce roots. So I got nice luscious plants on top, but no tubers below. I'm not gonna give up. As disappointed as I am, I'm gonna try it again next year. The bed will have sat there for a full year then. Those amendments should have had a chance to break down more. And I'm gonna put a layer of uh, compost on top, actual compost on top and uh, cover the bed with some uh, shredded leaves for the winter. Let them break down over time. And then next year, I'm gonna plant in there again. And hopefully all that richness will have had time to break down and not affect the uh, plants. Maybe it's gonna take a couple of years of uh, uh, developing this bed before things grow properly in here. But I'm gonna guess maybe that's what the problem was. If you have any suggestions as to why the sweet potatoes didn't develop, or if you agree that maybe it's the horse bedding in the below the soil layer there, because that was only about four inches of uh, a soil mix that was placed on top of that horse bedding. Um, let me know in the comments. I'd appreciate any insights, because this is, as I said, the third time now I've planted sweet potatoes and I've gotten zero sweet potatoes out of it. It's why I haven't grown potatoes, sweet potatoes in the past 10 years or more, because I tried it two years in a row, got those kind of results, but it's the third time now, no sweet potatoes. Disheartening. Meanwhile. So I think I've resolved the mystery of my football <laughs> melons here, whatever they are. In fact, I think these are Spaghetti squash. None like I've ever grown before, but they are spaghetti squash. I saw one in my neighbor's yard, which is almost very ripe. It's very yellow. And I think that's the indication that it's the spaghetti squash that I grew. Like I said, it's not like any I've grown previously. And I've grown spaghetti squash for years. They look more like that other one that I showed that we had growing. But that, I think, is actually a honeydew melon. So this is looking very yellow these days. So that's why I say I do think this is a, a spaghetti squash. I've never seen them grow like this before. Maybe it's just the variety I'm growing, but that's gonna be a spaghetti squashes, which is quite good then, because I've got like six of these <laughs> and I love spaghetti squash. So I'm the only one that does but I'll have a lot to eat. Over here are my trellis, hiding behind my tomato plants, is what I think a spaghetti squash here. Let me turn you around. This is not a spaghetti squash. This is, I think, a honeydew melon. Although it's got more of a squash appearance to it, doesn't it? Just really weird how my squash are growing this year. Well, we'll end up finding out what it is in a couple of weeks. Because until just now, I was thinking this was a honeydew melon. 
But the more I look at it, the more I can say, no, this isn't a honeydew melon. This is some kind of squash. Why it's white, I don't know. <laughs> but we'll find out eventually. So we haven't completely solved the mystery of my squashes or whatever it is I've got growing here. Almost positive the yellow ones are the spaghetti squash as I thought they should have been originally because that's what I planted. But then they had the, the look and texture of the pumpkins and I thought that was just an odd shape. But now that I see them ripening, I'm almost certain they're spaghetti squash. So what this white one is, not quite sure just yet, but we're gonna find out. Okay, if you wanna see what we were doing in the garden last week, check this video right here, and then subscribe and hit that notification bell. And that way you'll be able to follow the progress on all the vegetables we're not growing <laughs> as we try to grow a supermarket in our own backyard. Okay, thanks for watching.